Now that's the thing, people. As I was saying, don't be overly righteous. Don't be overly wicked. Right? And the thing is not to think of yourself higher or better than another soul. You know why God got it set up like this? Because he designed us to be able to do what? Help one another. But if we're too busy spending too much time judging one another over every little thing, how can we help one another? Like I said, think about a job, for example. You work somewhere. Let's say you work at Amazon. And you may be good in this area of expertise, but you suck at this area. The fact of the matter, you're still good at this area. But you still need help in regards to this area because you're not that good at that. You see how God got us set up to help one another. That's what he used. That's what Jesus used when a woman was uh, caught in the act of adultery. What did he use for them to condemn themselves? Themselves. He said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. So nobody could do nothing. Because we all sin. So they had to be like, okay, they walked away. They walked off. You see how he fixed that problem? You see, that doesn't mean we're not going to talk about issues in regards to other people. But the thing is, we first must try to allow Lord, the Lord to fix what's going on with us. Then we'll know how to help somebody else. Did I say condemn somebody else? Do you know how to help them? But now, this is kind of confusing, but it's not confusing. Because the Lord says, come out from among them. This is how I break it down. The Bible says, don't keep company with sinners. Well, if you really went by that from uh, a very strict perspective, you wouldn't even want to keep company with yourself. <laughs> You understand? Basically what he's saying is don't be a part of other people's sinful ways. If they got us, if they doing stuff that you're trying to get away from or they might lure you back in, stay away from them. That's righteous judgment. Be like, well, I don't want to go over there because if I know if I go over there, I'm going to fall backwards to what I'm trying to be delivered from. You see, that verse involves recognizing your weaknesses. And understanding your strengths. You know what? Well, people don't look at it like that. Does that mean you don't not got to see sin? <laughs> no. You're going to see sin. You're going to see it first within yourself. Then you're going to see it in regards to other people too. Now think about this. The Bible says, if you see a brother sin, a sin that's not into death, you pray for him. Right? What he said? You pray for him. If you see a brother or sister sin a sin that's not to them, he said, There is a sin that leads to them. I wouldn't believe that you pray. You don't need to pray for that. Now, so that's a sin that ain't even worth praying for. Ain't that crazy? But the only way you can know that is through suffering. He didn't even give a specific. He said, There's a sin that leads to death. Now, the Bible talks about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And I still ain't figured that out completely yet. I can read it 30 times and get a different answer. So I believe it's wider than people think. It's not as simple as this is what it is. This is what it is. This is what it is. Because now think about, think about this. I think this total rejection. The, the way you sum it up, that's like total rejection from God. But the thing is, how do you know that? You see? You don't. Only way you can know that is through the Spirit. Like you ever um wanted to pray and the Spirit was like, don't even worry about it. Don't think the Spirit can't tell you, don't even worry about praying. Because you're asking for discernment. You understand? Sometimes prayer is exactly what helps. Sometimes it's not prayer. But we're not supposed to say who's going to heaven or who's going to hell. So how can us, as human beings, unless we're spiritual, know exactly how to pray 
for another person. We need God. Because we got ways that other people see. But the thing is, what's wrong with the world today is we are so scared to correct another person, another human being. We are so fearful when it comes to, because we figure, well, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, so I shouldn't tell them nothing. Well, that's why the world is so messed up right now. He said, aren't you worthy to judge between two people? Aren't you worthy? He said, you should be able to, be able to make a judgment call on certain issues, according to the Bible. You are supposed to be so afraid because you ain't perfect, because you ain't never gonna be, that you're too scared to correct another person. But he said, be careful how you judge, right? Be careful how you judge. I'm gonna tell you why the Bible tells you this. I'm gonna tell you something, people. The Bible works, I mean, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Not really mysterious for real, but it's just ways we don't understand. Right? So that's mysterious to us. We don't understand. Let's say you so let's say you're racist. And you hate people that are not of your race. You just hate them. You don't know why you hate them, you just hate them. So you make a judgment on racism. And the Lord is so you can doing that's then next thing you know, you have a daughter or a son. Next thing you know, they marry somebody outside your race. Now what are you gonna do? God got ways of fixing problems. He'll make you realize, hey, this is wrong in so many ways. He'll bring, he'll allow the way you judge to return upon your own head. How do you know that? The Bible says you reap what you sow. I didn't have people accuse me of certain things and do certain things you're a problem in this, you're a problem in this, you're a problem in this. Just beat me down, beat me down, just beat me down. About two months, three months later, everything they accuse me of, they do. Do you understand? <laughs> they are doing it. And the thing is, I have done this. Then accuse somebody. I remember growing up, I used to say I would never drink or never smoke marijuana. So I judged everybody who smoked marijuana. I was like, I've never smoked weed. Look at them. We, we, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then before long, years later, guess what I find myself doing? Smoking weed. Hmm, I understand. Yeah, I can fall victim and I'm susceptible to the same vices that they are. People are, how many people you say, I never do cocaine? On cocaine. Do you understand? I'm just being real with you people. You gotta be careful out there. Because you are guilty and susceptible to, to evil and sin. Especially when you're super judgmental. I'm just being real. The ways of sin are death. So you got to help. Ask the Lord to help cleanse you. Now on to the next topic. All right. Now you can learn how to help other people without being so hard on them but this is the thing sometimes harshness and hardness is what the doctor ordered he says sometimes you save people with compassion sometimes you save people with fear but how do you know how to do it i've been saying it the whole time you don't it's the spirit it's the spirit the spirit judge of all things you see, you're trying to take your judgmental behavior and throw it out the window. And you utilize a righteous judgment through what? The spirit. That's why Peter, when the sorcerer who was bewitching people through sorcery, he got baptized. He got baptized. And then he saw, he said, I want that same Holy Spirit that y'all got. And Peter made a judgment call in the spirit. What he told him? He said, you're not right. You ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for it. How did he know that? Did he know? Did Peter know? 
God knew. That's the only way he can make that judgment call. The spirit. I told you people what I know, I'm going to let you know. But it's right there in the details. He said, I will send the comforter, the helper, which will bring all things to remembrance. Will was teach you all things, teach you. So who have you being taught to? Now let's go back. I mean, bye. Now let's go back to all these people like they got it right. They tell you this and that. One thing I know is about these motivational speakers, they leave God out. Well, these are the ways I got better. This is how I do it. This is, okay, I thought you were a follower of Christ. But now it's all about me. This is how I beat it. You didn't beat nothing. Jesus conquered sin and death on the cross. It's no longer I anymore. Am I saying, I'm not going to say I, I just said it. But you got to understand, from the Lord comes my help. So, any Christian slash motivation, no speaker, it's got to lead you back to who? God. Not what they feel. Well, I started eating right, and this is what I eat. I eat vegetables. And, well, that might work for you. Because the Lord knows what's best for you. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. And me. And no two bodies are alike. So how do you help people? In the spirit. You lead them to God. It's very simple. You can't tell somebody, well, I, you got to wake up at 4.30 in the morning because I wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Well, that's good to tell people how you get your day started. It don't mean everybody gonna get their day started that way. Some people work night shifts. I'm just being real now. You see, what's wrong with these idols, they figure, I got it figured out out. So they try to make you martyr yourself after them. I'm not trying to get you to martyr yourself after me. I'm trying to get you to get to God. And he'll martyr you how he wants you to be. Does that make sense? An actor can't tell an artist who paints nothing. <laughs> I'm just being real. You can teach me how to act, but you can't teach me how to paint if I'm a painter. You understand? So who taught me how to paint? The Lord gave me that gift. Now I can teach you how to paint, but I can't teach you how to act. Now let's go back to the spiritual gifts. Now take the gift of healing. If you never heal somebody, how can you explain how to heal? Well, it's a different, it's a very simple solution. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you, well, this is what you do first. That's why I don't like. I, yeah, it's true. People telling people how to exercise a day. How did Jesus exercise a day? That's who you learn from. How did Jesus do it? Come out from him with authority, with truth, with power from on high. Do I need a cross? Do I need holy water? Do I need anointing oil to cast out a devil or a demon? All you need is the spirit. Now he said when somebody is See, you anoint them with oil. But it's the oil is what cleanses you. It's faith. The oil is nothing. Jesus 
hardly ever use anything. He used spit one time and dirt. I guess sometimes the Lord just wanted to see if somebody going to go spit in the ground and try to do the same thing he did. That wasn't it. God do things that just to see. He could have did it without the dirt. <laughs> he didn't need the dirt or the spit. Do y'all notice that? A lot of people try to explain what did Jesus write in the dirt? I don't know. Could have been drawing a happy face. It doesn't matter to me. Now, what he wrote don't change the outcome. Who came in and saved the woman from being stoned? Jesus. So who saves people? You? You teaching people? Jesus. So how do you fight evil? Jesus. How do you get a healthy living? Jesus. How do you become rich? Jesus. Holy crap. Look at how easy it is. Now I ain't got to write no books. I ain't got to tell you my diet plan. I ain't got to tell you how I get in shape. I ain't got to do none of this no more. Why? Because I'm leading to you the person who's going to get you right. And who is that person? Jesus. Look at how simple it is. <laughs> Look, man. It's that simple. It's not as hard as people making it out to be. Why? People are after your money. Buy this prayer anointing cloth. Buy this drop of holy water. Buy my new book to tell you how to get close to Jesus. Huh? I need a book on top of the Bible to tell me how to get closer to Jesus? When Jesus said he promised us the comforter, why well, I need to buy your book? Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to tell y'all something. So if I'm going to tell you something to do something right now. If you got a bunch of these foolish doctrines, get rid of them. Let me tell you something. That might have worked for them. God is going to show you and tell you what works for you. And what is that? Jesus. What is that? The Holy Spirit. What is that? The Most High God. Oh, who lines you up? He does. Who fixes you? Steve Harvey? Joe Osteen? Stephen Furtick fixes you. Joyce Meyer's new book is going to fix you. T.D. Jay's new book, gotcha. Joseph Prince is going to teach you how to live a life better than Christ. Holy crap. Look at the answers. I don't have to write books. All I got to do is lead you to the master. He'll do the rest. He know the thoughts he think towards you. There's no better way. Than that. Everybody don't even drive their car the same. Some people drive with one hand. Some people are right handed. I'm right handed. But I drive with my left. For some reason. I can drive better with my left hand. So I can force somebody like, hey, this is how you drive. Drive with your left hand like this. But some people may can't drive with their uh, left hand. I know some people who can drive with two feet and I can't. Some people drive with one foot. So I can teach you how to drive my way or you can ask the Lord to teach you how to drive. Holy crap, deliver us from evil. I'm trying to give y'all some things here. What this got to do with evil? Where does self-seeking and all this other stuff come from? Let me pause now. We'll continue.